On 31st October 2016, Sun Alliance Rwanda, in partnership with Sun Civil Society Network, Procasur, and Sun Alliance, launched a Learning Route Exchange 2016, where delegations from eight African countries Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Malawi, Ethiopia, Uganda, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, and Kenya met alongside participants from international organizations and donor agencies. Members of civil society, academia, and government at national and district levels came to learn from Rwanda about some programs which have been put in place to eliminate malnutrition in the country. On the launch of this Learning Route Exchange, various guests emphasized on the reason of this program, its impact, and why Rwanda has been chosen as host country. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome you to this important Learning Route Exchange Program 2016. It is an honor to see a full auditorium full of nutrition actors across different sectors, donors, government officials, private sector, just to mention but a few, coming together to learn from each other. It's a pleasure. Your presence is a testimony that our commitment and resilience to get the job done and to do it right is on to eliminate malnutrition. As much as you're going to learn from us, we are going to learn from you as well. I have confidence, therefore, that this learning route will enable us to do a better job and defend our population from the challenge of malnutrition and will make a difference in their lives, most importantly, reversing a cycle of malnutrition or of malnourished children. So the time is now, and it's all about you and me, to act and change the trend. In her inaugural speech, Mary Rumsby, Sun Civil Society Network Vice Chair, said that they are coordinating civil society action and advocacy to address malnutrition both at national and sub-national levels. At the national level, we are uniting different groups to work on nutrition, um, so from civil society alliances, community groups, faith-based organizations, really from a wide range of perspectives. We are coordinating civil society action and advocacy to address malnutrition, both at the national and sub-national levels. We're channeling our expertise, experience, and evidence to make sure that policies and plans are really evidence-based. And we are working to hold governments and all actors to account for their commitments towards nutrition. As a Sun Civil Society Network, we've recently been through a strategy process, very much aligned to the Sun Movement strategy process. Um, our process was forward-looking and very consultative to ensure that the whole network really contributed to the strategy and work plan for the next five years. We developed objectives in these areas, um, effective and coordinated advocacy, really working to ensure that all stakeholders are held to account, that the Sun Civil Society Network is an enabling network that really supports national civil society organisations, that civil society alliances have the space to be able to effectively contribute to the multi-stakeholder platforms to address malnutrition. That civil society inspires the whole Sun movement to really address the cross-cutting issues that are relevant to nutrition, such as gender and women's empowerment, climate change, and the impact that humanitarian events have on malnutrition. Cara Flowers, coordinator of Sun Civil Society Network, commended Rwanda on the 85% of exclusive breastfeeding. A 7% exclusive breastfeeding coverage in Rwanda. We don't have that in the UK, where I'm from. I, I think that's incredible. I mean, a round of applause, please, again, because... <laughs> As Marie mentioned, we are in an enabling and learning network. And we really want to support national alliances in being as effective as they possibly can, both nationally and sub-nationally. So going right down to local communities, because we know that's where change is happening and that's where the important change happens. We want to achieve zero hunger by 2030. And if we're going to do that, we need to go fast and we need to go together. And it is possible, as the Peru and Lao examples show. In Peru, they halved chronic malnutrition in 10 years. 
Now we have, if I'm correct, and my maths is terrible, 14 years until 2030. We can do it. It is possible. Representatives of different civil society groups attending this Learning Roots Exchange presented clear explanations on where they are in fighting malnutrition in their respective countries, what is not done well, and the change they need. One of the key things that are really helping us in Kenya is our Kenyan Constitution 2010 that brought nutrition as a national and human, a fundamental human right. If you look at that Constitution, Article 43, 1C, every Kenyan citizen has a right to access to food. Look at Article 53, sub-Article 1C, every Kenyan child has a right to access to basic nutrition. Nigeria has the highest number of stunted children under five years in sub-Saharan Africa and the second highest in the world. Our rate of stunting is 37%. Our rate of exclusive breastfeeding, I'm sure, is the lowest rate uh, uh, among, you know, uh, countries that are present here is only 17%. What have we done to address this poor nutritional status in our country? We have in place a national food and nutrition policy which has just been revised. We have in place a national committee on food and nutrition. The national uh, policy on food and nutrition also needs an implementable plan of action to give effect to that policy. The government of Ethiopia has continued to co continued the commitment to nutrition by developing high level commitments called Sakota Declaration. Sakota Declaration to end child undernutrition by 2030. The aims of this declaration is to transform the lives of Ethiopian children through integrated community development in agriculture, health, nutrition, education, water and sanitation and hygiene, as well as social protection sectors. We need our governments to put domestic resources to fighting this scourge of malnutrition for the sake of our future children for the sake of our future societies and human capital, it is time. We need to have explicit budget lines for nutrition. Not only do we need to have those budget lines, we need to have funds released on time. And we need to make sure that those funds are actually used for nutrition, everywhere from awareness to community implementation. We need money. And we are saying that uh, as far as nutrition plans are concerned, they must reflect the realities of the communities. From all stakeholders, all parties, all key players working within the communities is extremely very, very key. Learning Root Exchange is in line with the government plans to fight malnutrition. Rwanda joined the Sun Movement in 2011 with a commitment to eradicate all forms of malnutrition. We have made significant progress in reducing malnutrition and have high exclusive breastfeeding rates. We are also on course to meet our commitment to reducing wasting. Rwanda is marking great strides to move to on course in addressing rates of stunting and prevalence of overnutrition as documented in the Global Nutrition Report 2016. The progress is made and thanks to the high level political commitment of this country, His Excellency the President of Rwanda and contribution from all the stakeholders. However, we know we must also tackle the inequalities which lead to poor nutrition outcomes for those who are less wealthy. We are working hard to ensure this is happening. In order for us to improve further, 
I also encourage you to support and strengthen coordination in governizing other sectors and departments to work together, such as the private sector, donors, and others, in marking malnutrition history of which this is possible through multisectoral approach. This is a government commitment to empower everyone playing a fundamental role in the economic growth and development. Finally, investing in nutrition and ensuring a strong multisectoral coordination are one of the smartest economic decisions Rwanda can make. Numbers show that Rwanda has enormously reduced malnutrition. Rwanda has made a very impressive uh, achievement in terms of reducing the stunting because by the year 2010, the rate was 44%, uh, and right now by 2015, it was reduced to 38%. So that has been a result of uh, a combined effort where, as government of Rwanda, we have tried to put in place what we call joint action plan to eliminate malnutrition. Eliminating malnutrition requires the joint efforts of the government, civil society, and the public sector. A good example is Sosoma Industries that has played an important role in fighting malnutrition in Rwanda. The objectives of Sosoma and Dynamic in the nutrition is to improve nutrition of Rwandans, uh, for fortify the nutrition, a product with good price, affordable to rural populations. That is very important. And the, uh, another important thing is that Sosoma is a market for local Rwandan products, soja, sorghum, and maize. That is a whole value chain because Duhamik is supporting farmers who produce maize, sorghum, and soja, and Sosoma is a market of those producers. Today's experience with the Sosoma is that uh, we've learned how the public-private partnership is working in Rwanda and uh, the work that Sosoma is doing to give back to the community and actually to support in scaling up nutrition. As I noticed, uh, Sosoma is having a, a way in which they give back to the community by uh, even the dividends that they get from the proceeds, they are able to uh, target the uh, rural communities with uh, the resources, so the resources are not going into waste. Again, I learned that uh, there's a, a good working formula between the Sosoma and the government, such that uh, the knowledge and the experience that Sosoma has had for the past many years since 1986 up to now, they're able to package it well and they're able now to advise the government on how to tackle malnutrition based on the experience that they have had. Educating the society is also very key in fighting malnutrition. Participants were shown how Urunana, a soap opera that has been aired on Radio Rwanda, has helped in educating the community about balanced diet. Participants have visited Nyanza district, which is a champion district in milk production. They have been introduced to milk as a way to enhance nutrition from the farmer to the consumer. This goes with the national framework. Nyanza district produces more than 30,000 liters of milk every day. The package that they have to, to have from this district is uh, all about uh, milk processing from the production up to the consumption. Uh, we have uh, milk, uh, milk correction centers, we have uh, milk plant, processing plants, and we have uh, industrial processing plants and uh, artisanal or just uh, which uh, uh, other processors which are not really uh, improved. So I think we, they will have the whole channel, the whole body channel from production up to uh, the consumption of milk. 
uh, including packaging, treatment, and so on and so forth. Exemplary farmers demonstrated that eliminating malnutrition is possible. I've learned here. I've learned that you can start with whatever you have. You don't, you don't need much. With whatever we have, we can utilize it to do much. And I've, this is a lesson I'm taking home because I've seen that even waste is wealth. And f I, I, it's just so awesome. And I'm taking back this lesson that for whatever we think is a waste, can be turned out to become something that can transform, can take you out of poverty. So that, that is one lesson I'm taking home, that it doesn't matter what situation you are, you can be rich where you are. Megan, who works with Sun Civil Society Network in London, said that Nyanza is a good example on how people can make income while ameliorating their nutrition at the same time. What has been fantastic is alongside uh, increasing um, income um, by providing cows to increase um, income for the farmers, uh, there's also been education around uh, nutrition and what makes a balanced diet, how to vary your diet and how milk can form a really important part of that. So as a result of this policy where each family is given a cow and taught how to um, use that as part of the, the value chain. Um, they've actually been able to uh, increase the, decrease the rates of malnutrition in the community. The Learning Root Exchange participants were taken in Gisagara district to see the coordination of the district plan to eliminate malnutrition, DPEM, which was started in 2011. They visited residents of Gishubi, who shared with them the use of village kitchen, Gikonichumudugudu, in creating awareness on preparing food with all the nutrients. They were also introduced to the kitchen garden Akarima Kijikoni and learned how they can cultivate their own vegetables. All of those strategies were initiated by the government to scale up nutrition. When I'm looking at women today coming together, is that uh, they're coming together, they already have the foods available, they're learning from each other how to prepare, and the government's not only working alone, they're also working with many other partners who are coming and holding the, the government and working together. Uh, what's most exciting, I've just learned again, is that the government has actually put up model kitchen gardens, modeled um, the kitchen, the cooking demonstrations, and they actually specific days when communities actually meet and do demonstrations. So it's really been devolved. Again, it's not only a big person's agenda, it's become the village agenda. It's become everybody's agenda. Everybody gets to be part of it. So for me, it's extremely exciting that it's becoming, um, you know, people are able to meet, socialize, and they're able to talk about malnutrition. And for me, what I see, such a beautiful country, I think the next five years, uh, stunting will be very different in Rwanda. What I learned best is the coordination, their, their commitment, the government's commitment, the private sector's commitment, and the community's commitment in working together in a very organized way and sustainable. So this is the, the best experience that I have learned. I am planning to, to copy this and improve our activity in my country. Vice Mayor in charge of economic development in Gisagara, Hanganimana Jean-Paul, said that all the programs demonstrated have helped the district to significantly reduce malnutrition. Gisagara is doing many things in eliminating malnutrition. Uh, among them, there is uh, sensitizing people 
uh, how they can work in, to, in order to, to fight against the malnutrition. Uh, we work together with the civil society. We plan it together with the civil society. We go in implementation together again. In uh, 2014, we, have, we had uh, 48 of starting uh, children prevalence. But after two years, in 2016, the, this uh, percentage have decreased to 11 percent. You see, that is a good improvement. After learning from Rwanda's experience in fighting malnutrition, the Learning Route Exchange participants were also shown the darkest part of Rwanda's history. The delegation visited the Kigali Genocide Memorial in Gisozi. This visit to this memorial has been a gut-wrenching, very painful experience, but I've also, I think the biggest take-home message I, I, will, I, I got from this is the importance of at least appreciating, commemorating what happened, learning from uh, you know, those bad experiences and learning from those experiences to prevent similar experiences from happening again in the future. And I've also learned the importance of peace building, reconstruction and unity as a nation to move forward and forge forward so that a nation actually grows and develops. <sighs> Genocide is real. This is real. The dead bodies are real. Anyone who wants to deny it, come, just come to Rwanda. Come and see for yourself. This is real. It's not a story. It's not a story. This happened. For one thing, I really like how Rwandans have come together as a people. Like we are one Rwanda. No Hutus, no Tutsis, we're just Rwandans. And we need to learn from that. We need to learn that we are Nigerians. We're not Igbos, we're not Hausas, we're not Yorubas, we're Nigerians. And the government needs to start promoting that. One people, because otherwise we might face something like this. One people, one nation. On the last day of the Learning Route Exchange, participants from the different countries presented their innovation plan that they are going to implement in their respective countries. I learned a lot. I learned different strategies in improving nutrition. I learned the strategy of coordination. I learned the strategy of uh, uh, decentralized um, and strengthening social um, uh, behaviors in, in the communities. I also learned the bottom-up approach of um, uh, improving nutrition using the stakeholders that are, for me, that is learnings that are, I will take back to uh, my country. Way forward, we have, uh, we understood that uh, in ensuring that um, uh, nutrition is reduced in Nigeria, we need to have those plans. In Rwanda, you already have plans that governments are implementing, of course, with the inputs of the people. So we don't have that kind of plan. We don't have an implementation plan. So way forward now, we want to ensure that that plan is developed since we already have policy guidelines that are already available. We have the food and nutrition policy which specifies exactly what we need to do for nutrition. So, but we don't have the plan of implementation that will go down to the, to the people in the communities. So we ensure that that plan is developed so that we can begin to incorporate all these learnings that we've learned into the plan and ensure that it's being implemented in the states. Rwanda is doing very well. We appreciate the learning route. Personally, I do appreciate the learning route. The only thing I can say is a, a scaling up of the good practices. We only happen to go to the southern part, but I believe it should be happening on the northern part. So we want to see everywhere in the country uh, having boring examples to where there are good practices and upscaling so that they can reduce malnutrition further. So we want to improve our nutrition specific sensitive
planning. So we want the specific actors and the sensitive actors to come together to see how they can jointly do programming. At the end of the it, we are looking at reduction of malnutrition within the country. I was expecting to learn from Randa, the Civil Society Alliance, on how they are implementing their nutrition advocacy and ensuring that the government prioritizes nutrition, especially at the district and the community level, and also to learn from other civil society alliances from across Africa on how they are prioritizing nutrition in their countries. Rwanda was chosen to host the Learning Route Exchange Coordinator because they could find all initiatives asked by some civil society from different countries. We selected Rwanda as the location for the learning route because we felt it was a fascinating country in which many of our alliances from across the African continent could come together and share experiences and learning. We are present in 39 countries. We have 39 national alliances and the network includes 2,500 different organizations who are all working to eliminate malnutrition and hunger in their respective countries. We know that Rwanda has made great progress in some areas, but also there were a lot of challenges. And we thought this would be a brilliant place to come um, for us to get together, to learn from each other, and reflect on what's working and what we need to do in order to eliminate malnutrition in the future. The Rwandan learning route was exceptionally well organized. Um, there's an organization called Procasor who we worked alongside in order to implement the methodology which involved identifying pra best practices and working with um, the local civil society organizations and communities um, to really articulate those and explain well what they are. Um, I think that everything has run incredibly smoothly.